Welcome to Let's Be Real 100%, where we are 100% real about life. We know that life happens and we are here to talk about it. And when I say we, I'm talking about it's all God and little old me. Join us as we jump into our topic today. Good good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good people. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Be Real 100%. We're 100% real about life, and we definitely are here to talk about it. So I've been thinking about something for the last couple of days and watching these commercials. Um, not all commercials, but the commercials that are dealing with uh, HIV and the medications. Um, a lot of the advertisement, the medication, okay, you know, you're advertising the medication. Yes, there are drugs that are out there to help, you know, HIV patients and things like that to get better. Um, and But when you advertise it, I feel like HIV is based off, for them, is a gay drug. Um, because every time you turn around, the commercials have usual, you know, a gay couple or... A transgender couple or whatever, you know, in the LBGTQ, A, B, C, D, F, G community. All of those, all you know, the whole alphabet is set up somewhere in there. But um, it's not always about being gay when you have HIV. Um, there are women out there and also men out there who have been diagnosed um, based on Either someone not telling them they were HIV positive and they were able, they had contracted it from them. Either it could be from a drug use of sharing of needles. Um, it could be a, a blood transfusion gone wrong, you know. I mean, anything can happen. Um, it's not just based off of, you know, same-sex same relationships. Um, even though that's a lot of it, it's not all of that. Um, and I wish they would advertise that in a different way. Um, I've seen like maybe one or two couples that are men and women or whatever, and that one one of the one of the uh, significant others is um, HIV positive, and the other one is not. And how they're talking about how you know, how they still do life together. Um, HIV is just a part of it. And, you know, we meet, we need more of that. So I would love to try to figure out how that is possible. Even with the advocacy um, programs, a lot of the those, again, are based off of you know, gay rights and pride and all this other stuff. And it's not that I'm coming against it. I'm not. I really am not. I mean, we know um, God hates, you know, he didn't make, he didn't create it to be man on man and woman on woman. <laughs> you know, I've learned that growing up. And I learned it in the Bible when he made Adam and Eve. And they made them to um, be fruitful and multiply. And we know that two men can multiply and two women cannot multiply. Um, and it's not, it's not right before God's eyes. We know those things. Um, I'm learning that still as of today, you know, because, you know, it's not an overnight deliverance, unfortunately, but I thank God for his deliverance power. I thank God for him delivering me. Um, but anyway, that's not here. That's not the whole thing of the story. So, but I just know I know that I, I'm there. I um, but I, I believe God, you know. So, but anyway, it's not for me. HIV is. It's just been dummied down, to being, you know, a gay thing, and it's really not. Um, it's not a death. It's not a death sentence. Thank God, you know, because. You know, God is the author and the finisher of our faith. We know that this sickness is not unto death. We know that God will get the glory out of it, out of it all. We also know um, that technology and medication in the pharmaceutical world has come a long way. And I believe that God has his hands on the doctors and the researchers that are there, that are doing their part um, 
on trying to truly cure, you know, certain things or trying to, you know, um, make people in, in a more healthier state and trying to kill off the viruses and not just HIV, but cancer and diabetes and high blood pressure and all those other medications that are out there. I feel like there are some doctors and there's some researchers that are led by God and allowing God to use their hands and their mind and their knowledge to bring out more uh, things that God created in the beginning for us as far as the herbs and the natural things um, that the body can use to heal itself uh, because that's what the body was meant to do is to heal itself with the the herbs and the things of this earth um, that God has created. So anyway, I just believe that God has, he has his hand in all of this. And of course, you know, the enemy going to play his part by making one thing bigger than the other and making his agenda, especially as far as the LBG community, you know, he's making that bigger than HIV itself. He's, he's, he's advertising that more than anything. Sorry about that quick break. Um, but yeah, um, it's a lot <laughs> that's not been really explained. And I feel like, like again, like I said, the enemy is making gay pride and all of that bigger than, you know, the actual disease. Because they're even, you know, making it to where it's okay to be, you know, again, like I said, it's, it's all advertising and gay, but... You know, they have the the drug that will prevent you from having HIV. So it's like, it's okay. And if you ever catch it, you know, the drug is there. You're already on, you're already on a drug that's going to help you stay undetectable. And I feel like that's crazy. Um, I mean, it's there. I mean, it's, it's it has to be done. But the, again, like I said, the advertisements is wrong. And I feel like they need more people you know, that are like me and all the other women and men that are out there who did not catch it by, you know, same-sex marriages or same-sex relationships or whatever. Um, people that are actually living, you know, a, a different life style as far as, you know, being married to the opposite sex, like a man to a woman and a woman to a man. Um, and I feel like they should advertise that more. And also just to say that, again, it's more than just, you know, in the gay community. It's it's more popular than what they're, what is being advertised or what has been told. Because it's not a very popular conversation. It's not, you know, vocalized in our health classes like they used to do back in the day when we were in school. Uh, I don't know what they're talking about nowadays. They're just talking about being, just having sex and having condoms. That's all they're talking about. And again, like I said before, I think I was told by my sister that they have this book. And it's, the, of course, it's the, of course, it's the bestseller. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? You know what I mean? Duh. Um, <laughs> it's about having sex as a young child. They got crazy positions and pictures and just, oh my God, it's quite disturbing stuff in this book. And this is what they want in the schools. They done dropped the Bible and they want these kind of books in the schools. Like, I, like, it's disturbing. It's, it's quite disturbing when you think about it. But even with that, <laughs> Even on these YouTube videos, um, they're they're placing it in there. They're 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 mixing it up with all this the, the innocent stuff that's supposed to be innocent. They're mixing it in there, if, whether it's a kiss here or something there. Um, then they sliding in kid porn and all that stuff. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, I think this this whole thing is going in the wrong direction and I just don't I just don't get it I really don't get it but 
he can tell it's been on my mind. <laughs> it's definitely been on my mind. And I've tried, you know, I'm working. I want to be an advocate, you know. I want to be able to, you know, go out and, you know, talk to people and get them to truly understand uh, what it is to be in a relationship with, you know, the right being, especially with God, um, because only God can fix this whole tangled up entanglement that we got, that this world has got going on. And the enemy is sitting back and enjoying this, man. Like, oh my goodness. Oh, it's just a lot. And I just, every time I see something that's just off, I immediately pray. Like, I really do. Because if God has given you another day, if God has graced you to breathe, there's another chance. You know what I mean? Like, his grace and his mercy is so available. Like, God's grace is amazing. You know, even when we feel like there's no hope, there's no way we can get out of this, God has a way of reaching that one, you know, and grabbing their attention. And that's why I feel like I want to be, I want to, you know, go more and um, advocate for those people, um, the ones that are lost. And not just the HIV community, but, you know, people that have gone through a lot of stuff and don't really know how to open up and talk about it. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how I got onto the medication part and end up on a whole nother topic. <laughs> That's what happens when you just when your mind is really just going. Um, but truly, I pray for everyone out there who is really truly struggling with something that they don't know how to talk about or feel uncomfortable talking to people about, you know, and they feel like they're gonna be judged and, you know, and not welcomed in any area so i truly pray for you all that you know um that you find that place that you find that safe zone that you're able to talk to and even if it's not a person you just sit back and talk to god about everything that's on your mind everything that's on your heart you know, because he's always there that's listening. He's he's not one that's going to, you know, reject you and talk about you like some people would, that you feel like people would, um, because he's a definitely that safe space. He's that father when you need a father. He's that mother when you need that mother, that counselor, that therapist, you know. And if you just can start to talk to him, every day you'll start to see that your life changes and this just is not for you know that just one type of community this is for you know the lbgt community who feel like they have been dropped by society they feel like they're not welcome you know in the house of god because they're so far gone or you know, they feel like they have messed up so much and they don't have another identity other than what they have identified with. Um, this is for, you know, that woman who is depressed and stressed out and not knowing what direction to go in. You're, you're, you're literally living off a, you know, a puff puff, you know, the, a drop in the gas tank kind of thing. And it, it, you're stretching it as much as you can, but it doesn't go that far. Um, and this is also for that man who don't understand his identity, don't know his masculinity, uh, don't, who has also dealt with depression and, you know, being dropped by society, no matter what color you are, it's not always about black people, you know, all the other races, they have their issues as well. We have just made one bigger than the other. But um, we're all 
the same race. We all have, you know, red blood running through our veins, whether we're a child of God or not. But anyway, um, I just feel like there's so many, there's so many people that's out there who don't really have a safe space. But I trust and believe, trust me and believe that if you t start to talk to God, I promise you, he will lead you and he will lead somebody to you or he, you know, he will have a, an encounter with you some way, somehow through a person, through an angel, through something he'll encounter with you and he'll let you know that he is still there. We have to see God while he is still, while he is still near because there's going to be a time and day where <laughs> things are going to get real dark. And we have to know that we know we have God in our hearts and know we have the Holy Spirit to keep us, keep our minds, you know. And because the enemy is truly walking through this earth, seeking the who he can destroy. And I feel like those are the kind of people that he's going to go for. And even if he, you feel like he's not going for you, that means he already has you, you know. And there is, there's still hope. There's still a way out. There's... Because God is still God, and he's going to always be God. <laughs> At the end of the day, in the beginning, now, in the end, he's going to be God. So I just pray that you take the time and you you gain that relationship with God. You just start talking to him. Like That's all it takes is to talk to him in your car, in the shower, while you're cleaning, while you're working. You know, five minutes here, ten minutes there. Five minutes, that five minutes can turn into a whole hour because you're really just having this conversation and you're letting things out more than ever. I'm, I'm sorry, I done broke about a couple times. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to come on here and just really <sighs> encourage you all to come to God because there's a lot that's happening in the world that is quite disturbing, right? And it's not, I don't know. It's just a lot, a lot that's going on. My main purpose, honestly, was just to come on and just let y'all know that, you know, HIV isn't a, um, isn't it, it isn't a gay, a gay disease, you know, other people in this world have gotten it through other areas. Um, I just wish, again, the advertisement was different. Um, and just knowing that God is yet still a healer at all, you know. So, yeah. Um, I feel like I done went here from there <laughs> to topic to topic. Um, you can tell my mind has been going over and over and over again about um, these things. But um, I truly pray, my main thing is to pray that you... Give your life to God, gain a relationship with him, become intimate with him in his word, um, finding a fellowship church that preaches and teaches the kingdom and teaches and teaches the Bible in the right way and not just picking out things that, you know, is going to be comfortable with them. And then um, just come to God again and be encouraged. Know that. God is your safe circle. God is the safe zone for you when you feel like you can't talk to anything else, anybody else. And um, again, I'll come back with y'all with another episode later. Um, I'll be probably more organized because I feel like I was all over the place today. But that's when you know it's real and you know your mind being uh, all over the place. So. Anyway, thank y'all for coming back to another episode, and I'll talk to y'all guys later. Thank you for listening to Let's Be Real 100%, where we're 100% real about life. We hope that you enjoyed the topic today, and we hope that you trust God more and more each day, and we hope to see you next week.